everybody. I'm doing a session for a client, so I'm going to be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, I want to thank you so much for exploring a session with me, and thank you so much for sharing with us all here on YouTube. These are some pretty deep goals, and I'm very curious to see what we discover today. I'm going to read them out loud, and we'll get started, okay? So you say, Hi, Abby. I could use some understanding and healing about an issue that's followed me my whole life. I constantly feel like I'm in trouble, like I'm doing something wrong all the time. I feel like a criminal. I pride myself on being exceptionally caring, I'm so tired of feeling like a bad person, an evil person even. I don't want to carry this anymore. I allow you, your guides, and higher self, my guides, and higher self, all the archangels, and the love of all to release me from this. I'm done. I am a good, caring person. Always have been, always will be. I want to feel that way every day. That's the truth. Thank you. I'm grateful for you. Wow. You know, I I get these feelings too sometimes. So I'm really curious what what we're going to discover here. So you pride yourself on being a heart-centered person and thinking about others before yourself but you carry this sensation like like you're a bad person that like you're a criminal even an evil person and that doesn't align with how you see yourself how you express yourself it's not in a way then fair to who you define yourself to be who you pride yourself to be okay Clearly, you're energy sensitive to be able to have that monkey on your back feeling, you know what I mean? Because it doesn't make sense, all right? It doesn't make sense, but you're energetically digesting something from somewhere, and it's kind of aligning, like it's, it's the clothes that you wear even though it's not you. Okay, here we go. Let's see what comes up here. All right. This is so emotionally vulnerable. It's like oh, very noticeable in my emotional gut, solar plexus chakra. Wow. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to explain this. It's complicated. I don't know how you live each and every day but energetically it's almost like you have separated yourself from yourself the separated you actually looks like a humanoid bumblebee okay and this humanoid bumblebee there's some kind of um, strict teacher um, who looks like a strawberry, humanoid strawberry, strict teacher next to the humanoid bumblebee. And both of them, and I constantly hear whips cracking, okay? And both of them are looking into your solar plexus chakra where there is, I, I can't tell the depth of it. It seems to me like someone put a bomb um, next to maybe what could be a cave entrance and blew up a bunch of stone or even bricks um, from a wall and it just all caved in here. But I also see what could be a stairway through the bricks into a deeper place. And it's, I mean, it's a broken place. It's a broken place. And the bumblebee and the strawberry, strict teacher strawberry, are not um, capable of entering into there. I'm starting to feel, oh. <laughs> um, <gasps> this has to do with the heart. There's energy kind of coming across the chest area, the upper chest area. 
And there's a sensation of having turned off certain emotions, numbing certain um, feelings so that you can be a strong person. You can be a strong person, okay? So if we are allowing ourselves to feel loud emotions, they can come before our responsibilities, all right? And now we're giving into the emotions over giving into the act of living. And so I am experiencing that you've numbed emotions that might get in the way of you being a productive person. <laughs> and so that's the next thing. And I'm still just sort of like, wow, wow, what? <laughs> there's so much going on here and it's complicated. Um, so one thing at a time, okay? We'll make sense of it all. There is, the next thing is like, I can't quite go into this, this bricks, the broken mountain. I can't go in there. Everything is starting to get very dry, um, like drying up from the inside out, drying up from the inside out. Like a flower that was meant to be beautiful and open and full bloom um, became dried up from the inside out and never was able to reveal or show its true beauty. Um, so then it just died. <laughs> and so it just, it was basically like an invisible flower because who wants to look at the flowers that aren't in bloom? The, the non-blooming flowers are not as pretty, not as noticeable, not as special <laughs> as the flowers that are in bloom that we can see, that we can appreciate. So there's something about, um, this is a devastation to your soul. It wasn't fair to your soul that you were meant to be a beautiful flower. And what ended up happening is you became dried up from the inside out and were never able to properly bloom, okay? So that you could be appreciated for the beauty that you are. So how would you be appreciated if you're not worthy of being seen? Um, it's, it's, there's something here about you're droopy, you're gray, you're... Um, you're, you're more like drooping into the soil. You're not um, desirable. You're more like a weed that we want to get rid of. You're ugly. I mean, those, that is actually a physical statement. That is actually a physical statement. Actually pointing and looking at the ugly flower, okay? The ugly flower, ew, it's messing up our pretty garden. The ugly flower is messing up our pretty perfect garden of perfect flowers, okay? And you're not a perfect flower, so we don't want you. You're not um, good enough for us. And I keep hearing shallow, 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 shallow like that, okay? And I just see all these people that represent shallow people, and they're like, oh, oh, look at the pretty flowers. Oh, they're pretty. Ew, ew, what's that gross flower? Ew, it's messing up the pretty flowers, gross. And it's like uh, observations that only care about superficial things, like pretty, ew, ugly. And I mean, it's like, it's like preschool stuff. We don't call people ugly because that hurts their feelings. And these people don't care if it hurts your feelings or not. They just don't even care. In fact, they kind of want your feelings to be hurt so you know your place in society. You know your place in the world. You're not wanted. You're just absolutely not wanted, okay? You can't accept this because you yourself know the value of yourself and you know that you are worthy of being wanted. And you can't seem to override all this personal judgment and desecration of your value. Like they won't ever let you and your personal feelings about yourself ever be um, heard, received, acknowledged. Um, so you're constantly um, beat down by judgment, okay? Judgment that you actually are strong enough to say isn't true about you. Those judgments are not true about me. Those judgments are based upon people who lack um, some, some sort of depth within themselves and they're then judgmental people. And so they're insecure or whatever. And so you are strong enough to not take that to heart. However, enough times it's abuse. And the abuse, enough times they show me a baseball bat to the heart over and over and over again, but you have a really strong heart. And so while you've been had a baseball bat to your heart, you still maintained um, your inner strength. You still maintained the light of your, your spirit and your soul. Now I'm starting to understand why you had to separate because the abuse was too much. 
And so the only way for you to maintain what you had decided you were going to maintain, your personal strength, to maintain that, you would have to separate and become other parts of you and channel those other parts of you that were separated from the human body and channel them through your human body in order to maintain that caliber of who you are. So actually, you're an incredible person. You're an incredible soul. I have no idea how you accomplish this, but clearly you aren't going to give up, okay? You are not going to give up. Okay, my guys are saying that you died a long time ago, all right? You died a long time ago, and that what you carry is um, a dead body. You also, while you have the separated bumblebee and the separated strawberry teacher, um, you have a dead self that you carry with you and it's um, a rotted corpse. It stinks, it reeks, um, and you have to smell it all the time. And because your heart was beaten enough, it actually did kill you. I know that sounds strange because you're still alive, right? <laughs> um, so you have a dead version of yourself too, okay? And that is somehow integrated into your physical body, your physical day-to-day -day life, you carry a dead version of yourself in that, okay? And the bumblebee and the strawberry are separated from your physical body with the dead energy body in it. And it's almost unbearable. I mean, this would be like, um, let's just go to like the finest restaurant in the whole wide world and let's sit down to eat the best meal ever made. Um, and then let's take some like like pig manure, cow manure, like, let's just desecrate it with things that are wrong, that should not be in my beautiful dinner, okay? And let's just desecrate it with um, terrible, nasty junk. <laughs> Some S-H-I-T, we're gonna desecrate it with that, and then you're gonna get to eat that every single day. That's gonna be a part of your daily life, okay? You're gonna get to consume that. Why? We need to release the dead body. It's poisoning the delightfulness of the, the life of force of yourself and, and life itself. It's like you, you seem to know that life is a beautiful thing and that this doesn't add up or this doesn't make sense to you. There, you, my God, okay. Just so you know, my vision, when I'm working in your energy field, it's almost like everything is short. Like... I'm not able to see, I'm not able to like open my eyes super wide. They're forced to, it's like, I only see half of the scene. It's like all, always cut from the top. So let's just say we have a, a rectangle sheet of paper and then just cut that in half. And that's all I get to see. But there is something of a very tall shadowy figure and even kind of, um, it, it's almost like spherical, like it's, its body is kind of um, rounded over top of you. And so I can still pick it up in my very cut off view, viewpoint. You kind of uh, decided that you, you had died and you are, you aren't wanting to live anymore in a way like because you're not dead yet. Um, so this is very conflicting. I'm going to have to try to... It's really hard on my heart. Because you're in between, um, basically, life and death. And really shallow breathing about it. It's like you don't breathe deep enough. Like you don't breathe in enough air so you're always like half breathing you breathe um like half breaths <sighs> that's what it's like in here i'm gonna have to kind of somehow physically conform to half breathing <laughs> this is what half breathing looks like <laughs> Because you're, you're really muscularly clenched across your chest and your shoulders and your arms, almost like you're, you're kind of hunched, like closed forward, almost like you're trying to grow something that's going to come around and close you into a bean pod, okay? So you just get closed up in it, okay? And it's like, make sure that you're standing up and your shoulders are back, okay? 
because it feels like your your body is coming rounded forward okay and it, it this is affecting your physical body this is affecting your physical body okay it's even hard for me to want to sit up right I cannot under I kept I keep saying who is this jerk? Who is this jerk? Who is this jerk? <laughs> it's just like this tall rounded shadow thing. And I can't on my life um interpret his heart. But I keep calling him a jerk. He's a jerk. He is a jerk. He is an absolute jerk, okay? Not nice person. I, I don't know why. I'm just supposed to point and say, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about whoever this is. <laughs> this person is a jerk. <laughs> and so I keep pointing and saying, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. And this person does not represent the superficial, shallow people and the flowers. This is like, that almost seems like it was a long time ago. And this seems to represent somehow the present, okay? The reason why you're attracting this jerk is because you yourself are not collected. You're scattered. You're carrying a dead corpse body that stinks. And you, you're, you maybe take pride in... in how bright and strong you are but until you become collected um you can't actually manifest with that energy um on the level that you could because you're scattered and and i'm still trying to figure out how in the world am i going to pick up your pieces and how am i the world am i going to do this because it's complicated this isn't just like easy this is very complicated this is very unusually complicated it's like nobody has come up with a mathematical equation that represents this yet it's like way beyond our human mind so i've got to be patient with this i say i know it's going to make you stronger and i tell the bumblebee and the strawberry lady i say i don't care you're going to go <sighs> mm. And I take them and put them in this broken cave area. This, I mean, it's bricks, it's rocks, and it's mushed, and it's your emotional gut. And they have to go back in there. They have to. I'm just like stuffing them in there. Like, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> they aren't going in there. Like, I'm just like, get in there. They aren't going in there. Yeah, that's right. You know what? I gotta look at your sacral chakra. <sighs> I don't know how I'm, how, uh, this is the next thing is that you, I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you basically are overly in control of, um, you're overly, you're really self observant and, you're kind of um because of that you're too much in control and you're not you're i have no idea how you're going to stop doing that because you're um very conscientious of every single move you make so when i'm making moves in here you're already looking at my moves and you're like playing a game you're constantly trying to outsmart these light moves in life like life is this um, chess game and you're constantly looking at each and every maneuver each and every move right on down to the the, the tick on the clock like it's almost like you're conscientious of every sound every movement every little detail everything um you're like collecting information at like probably four or five times the speed of your average human being and it feels like, in a way, a gift or a talent, but um, that's also going to contribute to 
I mean, you're going to have to learn how to let, um, y you're in control, but no, you're not. You're not in control, are you? And there's something beyond yourself that is like a, you know, God, your higher self, spirit guides, like beyond yourself, archangels, right? Um, you're going to have to lean into, you're going to have to give into what is going to understand it more than you. And you're going to have to let that do the change, changing, which is exactly what you're asking for. You're asking, you're saying that you don't want to feel this way anymore. And you're saying, I'm done feeling this way. I know who I am. I don't want this anymore. Um, if I can't figure out how to do it, okay, guide to higher self, etc. Um, do this, take this, I'm done with this, okay? So you've already um, acknowledged that this is bigger than yourself, okay? So you have to go to a, a, basically a consciousness that it is um, va more vast than the human, I mean, we're all part of God, so you're just as vast as God because you are God, right? But we're translating it through this human, and we're not... Um, we don't know everything. It's obvious. We, we literally don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. Look at the human race. I mean, it speaks for itself. So you have to let that in. All right. So I guess that's the part um, of the path that we're on right now. That statement, allowing. I am constantly jittered and jammed up. I just feel like I'm kind of like... I don't know, like a rusty tin man or something. I'm constantly like, it's almost like the muscles are tight and the bones are, I don't know, muscles and bones. It just, you're div, you're, I'm just going to pause for a bit. I mean, there's the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And I, I want to make sure that I am following through with everything we've experienced and seen this far and giving an explanation um, to why you're, um, you, you feel that, why you feel like a criminal or evil person. Like, why is that something you're picking up on? So far, it's, it's like, um, let's just say somewhere in your path, and this had to be a very prolonged experience, prolonged, because I mean, I'm, I'm sensing challenge to the point that you had to die and separate parts of your living selves. And now you're channeling those parts through you in order to maintain what you pride yourself in being while you carry a carcass of yourself. And that was from enough basic baseball bat hits to your heart and you were the problem. You were the problem for years and years and years and years and years. So yeah, you are evil. You are a criminal. You're the problem, okay? You are the flipping problem. You're the just gross flower that's messing up the bouquet. You're, you're yuck. You're nasty. You're just disgusting, you know? That's, that's the shallow people. You seem to know that, but that doesn't mean it didn't make an imprint. It didn't leave an imprint that's continuing to echo like a gong through your energy field. And this is how you've shape-shifted, cut yourself into pieces in order to maintain a stability. This isn't stability, man. This isn't. It's an option. This option, it, 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 this, this option has got to mend. And, I mean, it comes right back down to, you already know this. Let's get to the mending part. You're already saying, I'm done with it. But the mending part, because of what it took to become this, the mending part is going to take that to become mended. So let's say it takes 10, 20, 30 years um, to become this, all right, of, of this torment, okay? Now, how you think it's going to happen overnight that suddenly you're going to just simply vibrationally, psychologically, emotionally understand how to be something else? You're going to have to adapt day after day after day, slowly but surely adapt to the transformation of you yet again. And it's going to be a healing transformation. But this, my friend, is probably going to take time. Okay. 
I don't know why I feel so much intensity. Like I have to, I feel so intense talking to you about this. Like, ah! <laughs> I got to really tell you this. <laughs> I got to really tell it to you. Whew. There's just so much in the heart and the throat. I mean, sacral chakra, I'm still trying to get there, okay? <sighs> but this is, I mean, you're pretty quick because you're already, um, you're like a computer. I mean, you're already like, do, 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 like um, processing the conversation. And you do like to take matters into your own hands, okay? I mean, that's like, that's what this is like. Okay, 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 ba 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 There's a little person, and it's an, it's an ankle biter, but it's a knife, like a, it's an Achilles tendon cutter. <laughs> it's got like a, it's gonna saw your foot from your leg, okay? It's gonna saw your feet off. And it's got these like sharp teeth, and... And you're, you're, there's more of these. They're actually constantly, you're constantly tormented by little things that are hurting you all the time. Um, there's, there's now like what is becoming thousands of these little, little ankle biter types, but they're constantly all over you and they're constantly messing with your head. Like, like if you're not thinking fast enough, um, they'll put a, a different digit into your calculations and then it will circulate back a problem into your life, okay? And you you seem to be trying to um, solve for also these. <laughs> you're solving for X <laughs> ankle biters um, who are constantly jacking up your equations. I'm just like, I don't know what to say. Like, I've got to solve for ankle biters. I got to solve for bumblebee strawberry. I got to solve for the tra childhood trauma that um, killed the flower that never technically died, that's still carrying the carcass of its past over all these years while I'm in a computer that is super fast and high paced and smart. And it's just like, I can't go fast enough for you, man. <sighs> yeah, I know. Okay, so they're like bats. They're like you. They kind of constantly eating at your energy field. And you're hauling them, thousands of them. They're always trying to eat you and get to your heart, okay? And you're like hauling them through a, a portal. It's a most unique place, um, but this portal is extremely jet black, and then it has this glowing red um, rim, and then it also, it's almost like we're inside of some kind of jewel, because it has this like faceted, um, and it's all like glowing and outlined, and then what is on inside the outline is black, and the outline is glowing red, and it's really pretty, but it has to do with some sort of doorway or portal, and you're hauling like a ton literally a ton of these ankle biter things that are just constantly eating at your energy field and you're having to repair it constantly. How do you even maintain sanity with this? You say you're gonna show me, okay? And you walk through and it's not what you think. You walk through a door that is you, it's not a door. I don't know how that's possible because you're entering into a totally different looking place. But there's a massive um, hammer that is really heavy and you pick the hammer up and you slam it down and it's like all these things are going bum, 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 like they just start bouncing. Isn't there like an old school Nintendo game with the like you pound the hammer and the things like bump, bounce up and down every time the hammer is pounded? Maybe somebody pounds a hammer it's like Mario is bumping up and down. Um, but you, everything is is bumping up and down and then you walk back through and you leave that place but they all start to come back again and you scream and you say it just never ends it never stops it never ends it never stops okay you're just frustrated like this and this thing this jerk is still here who is this jerk i say i tell you you tell me who is this jerk who is this jerk? 
I hate him. I hate. I hate him. I hate him. Okay. Well, why don't you try the hammer? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll work. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I mean, you're like whispering this angry whisper voice. You say, you show me that you see a zipper and you open the zipper and it goes right down the front of him and you try to pull his body apart from the inside out and it never works. And this is tormenting you to the point that it's encouraging you to become, um, you lose yourself, okay? For you you to lose yourself because enough torment and enough torture and enough of this picking at your energy field and desecrating and judgment and on and on and on and messing with your freaking sulfur x's messing with your solutions or whatever um it, enough of that and you'll go mad anybody would go mad and I literally say, what do we do? You're asking for it to be done with this. Please set the soul free from this. <laughs> There's like a, you're so creative, man. There's like a, a nasty evil, like queen of hearts, like Alice in Wonderland evil. Does she have a hammer too? I think she does. Like she plays croquet, you know. Um, but she's really vicious, man. She just laughs and laughs and laughs and laughs. And she likes to pick you apart in your heart. Like she takes little tweezers and takes out little tiny kernels from your heart. And just constantly torturing you. And you're starting to become made out of a metallic energy. And you start to go into this like energy battle with her. And you use your mind to try to outsmart her next move and you fill her with mercury is what it's like. And then you weigh her down so she's too heavy to move. And you say, I will kill you. I will kill you. I will kill you. You say that. I will kill you. I, I tell, I, I actually ask Archangel Metatron, I, I, I'm starting to understand something here. I say, look at, look at you. I mean, is this like your day to day where you're having to constantly be calculating your way through all of this? Are you literally to outsmart everything all by yourself? Like there's, where's your support at? Because all I'm seeing is you constantly having to overcome this is impossible feats. What if you need to just like, um, you know, UFC, just get beat, get the beat down and then just fall. And it, it's not giving up. It's just, it's just being done with the fight. Why, what are you fighting with and why are you still fighting? This is still coming from your past. You're still fighting with your past. And your past is mimicking yourself, which is why it's constantly outsmarting you as you outsmart it. And it's basically ripping you apart. You then yourself are ripping yourself apart without realizing it. Because you were ripped apart you've been ripped apart by others other souls that literally ripped you apart until you were dead and then you carry the dead you with you and try to salvage some parts that's why the bumblebee and the strawberry didn't want to go into that like broken cave of your emotions because they're salvaged parts I know she's a strict strawberry teacher and I know we've got like this humanoid bumblebee. What does that say about you? You must have a straight, narrow, strict nature, um, hardworking bumblebee nature. 
not letting, and you don't even know how to let love in, literally. That's what you need to ask. You need to ask in a future session or ask your higher self, you need to ask, how do I let love in? When you ask, how do I let love in? Teach me, love, come in. Come in my doorway, love, please. Love, come in. That's, that is what you need to be doing now. All that stuff about criminal and evil and all that, that's, that is from the pounding, the beat down to your heart and it's just superficial judgment that you did absorb that. No matter how tough and how strong and how smart you are, you did absorb that. Whether you wanted to or not, you did absorb that. And it did flipping hurt you to the point of death. And you need to acknowledge that. You aren't acknowledging how hurt you've been. You just put it away and keep trying to overcome the hurt, but you can't overcome it. You have to give in to it. That is how you bring yourself into balance. I'm going to look at your sacral chakra real quick. I wanted to do that. You need that. You need that. You need some sacral chakra work as well. I mean, I'm not allowed to enter into your sacral chakra. And it's kind of like, how dare you think that you, you, like I'm less than, I'm like not as good. I'm not worthy of entering your sacral chakra. And you say, I hate you to me. Like I'm th a threat. Like the love is a threat to your, your well-being. Love is a threat to your well-being. That's false. We got to work on that too, okay? Love is not a threat to your well-being. Love was supposed to not degrade you, and it did. It degraded you. It said other flowers were more precious than you, and is this your family? Is this parents? Is this people that you thought were your friends that ended up being superficial jerks. I mean, <sighs> family, friends, right, are supposed to equal love every single time. Supposed to equal love, unconditional love, Christ consciousness level love. How many human beings have reached Christ consciousness level? The people aren't perfect here, okay? And maybe all we can do is forgive them. Maybe that's literally all we can do is forgive them. I don't know if that's going to solve for the pounding in your heart to death, but it's an, it's an option, you know? You say, kill me, kill me. You say, kill me. Kill me already. Mm. Just kill me already. You're just a scum on the ground, slowly crawling your way toward me on an empty street, and very little light here, and nobody's home, and you say, kill me already. I say, uh, uh, why are you asking me? Go ask that, like, Queen of Hearts person. <laughs> I mean, I think she was, like, all into this. Maybe you should ask her to kill you. I'm here to heal you, not kill you. I think you got the wrong person. You, you say you, that I know what you mean and you literally stab me in my foot. Oh, you're a monster. You're cussing like a sailor you're standing up you're finding the strength to stand up and you this is pure evil energy 
This must be where you're picking up on it. This is, um, I mean, it's fascinating. I'm like bedazzled by this. Very rare that I would ever come across such concentrated evil energy. Very rare. It has absolutely no power. I mean, it's zero power. But it's very concentrated and it's not easy to create it. It's not easy to create this, by the way. You created it. Evil bones in your body. These are your evil bones, okay? It's just saturated in it. It was actually almost like part of your solutions or your mechanisms or solving for X whatever's. It's almost like um, you had to create a funnel, um, a filter system. So all that negativity that you had to digest that killed you, right? It funneled into very specific um, safe space. And the safe space um, was to build that it just it ended up becoming bones it ended up becoming bones and they show me that you're you have evil bones in your body you, you all your bones are evil bones every bone in your body is evil bones okay so there's not an evil bone in your body all your bones are evil okay all of them are but they're that it's literally just residue it's really nasty residue of all the dark energy that you filtered tried to filter out filtered into this space which is still a part of your life part of your soul part of you right um, but you had nowhere to put it so it just kind of became your bones and it is it is nasty as all get out it is rude it is um corrupt it is um cussing constantly and telling you very degrading of you very um it's picking you apart piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. Again, with the tiny little tweezers in the heart, you know, the queen of hearts that's picking your heart apart, you know? So this thing is very influential and it has yet no power. You only believe it. You believe what it tells you. You believe it because the people that chose the other flowers over you, you believed it somewhere inside yourself as well. And it flippin' hurt you really bad. And you tried not to allow it to, and my God, did it ever hurt you. Because you're human, and this is part of your life experience, and you can't be stronger than it. You have to go through it, okay? Stronger than it is avoiding, avoiding is not facing and not going through it. It's just trying to amputate the issue. <laughs> Can't amputate the issue. Eventually you will have to feel that pain. You will. In this lifetime or some other lifetime, trillion lifetimes from now, you will feel that pain. You um, come into the scene and you shed a tear and you place the tear into this energy. And you say, this is my soulmate. And it's a black skeleton of this concentrated evil energy, okay? And, oh my God, no way. You say, I cannot hurt this. Don't please, like you're protecting it. You're like in the way of it and saying, please don't hurt this. Please don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. And I say, he's hurting you. I'm not hurting him. I'm transmuting him. That's transforming him to some new energy. You have to stop being possessive. Why are you possessive of this? Is this all you have? This is all you have left? And then you kind of absorb some of thing from his eyes and it, f it filters into your face and you have a baseball bat and you start beating him down really bad, like trying to break his bones. And he congests your mind and your eyes and you don't, you become not yourself. But then it goes back into him and then you protect him. 
and I just snap my fingers and I say Archangel Metatron like this is a way out of balance relationship this isn't even supposed to be a soul this is just supposed to be evil energy that needed a place to go and then you fell in love with it you became the light side it became the dark side and it became you your evil bones you're the angel and the devil you are the yin yang this isn't even real this isn't even a real soul all it is is where the love that was supposed to come from friends and family it it was toxic it turned into toxic energy you tried to filter it through it got it stayed with you and it became your lover and you became in love with toxicity toxic negative energy and i i say yes and archangel metatron comes and he takes a knife and he literally cuts like he's sawing with a it's like a little pocket knife it just literally i hear sawing this energy off of your bot off of your soul it's like a um, fabric it's sawing it off okay and you're screaming 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 and you scream that he stole my eyes you scream, he stole my eyes. I hate him. And I start to see as this thing is completely cut from you that your body starts to turn to dust and you're still screaming as a skeleton without any skin. You have no skin. And Metatron is showing me that what was cut off is basically just major dense energy weight. Like you can't imagine it's like the weight of planet Earth or something like it's it's ridiculously heavy. And he even shows me in a jokey way that um, not even Archangel Metatron is strong enough to haul this off. We need to like call the team over and everybody work together to haul off this um, concentrated evil energy. It wasn't even you. It was completely not even you. You're starting to um, be reborn. And there's like all this sparkle light and you feel totally different. And there's fairies and lots of fairies appearing here. And you say make the pain stop and the pain already has stopped. So you're kind of like make the pain stop. Oh, it's. There is no pain. I, I'm so confused. Kind of like this. The fairies say you need to rest now. For a very long time you need to rest. And they tell me that that dead part was not dead. It just was like um, suffocated so bad that it became a lifeless energy. And that has to be reabsorbed into you. Which you are quite alive enough to absorb that in. No problem. But... It's like coming down with a cold or coming down with pneumonia. I mean, it could be coming down with anything that is, um, it's going to require you to really slow down and rest. They take all of your equations and they there's like 60 fairies and they absorb your, um, I see your, you have this like um, ca calculator thing going all the time and um, they absorb parts of that calculator into each and every one of them. And they don't want you to try to calculate anything anymore. Let life surprise you. Don't calculate anymore, please. Let life surprise you. When you're trying to calculate, you're trying to plan for the future. And they don't want you to plan for the future anymore. They want you to stop calculating. And they say it's the only way for you to, I guess, get to the next evolution in your soul in this lifetime. And this isn't a guarantee that you'll be able to do it. It's okay if you can't, but it's, um, they show me that you're trying to do this. And the best advice they have is to stop calculating. When you calculate, you when you stop calculating, you will be giving back more time to yourself and more enriching experiences. When you calculate, you take um, flavor away from life, from people, from opportunities. It, it, it takes a flavor out. And when you stop calculating, everything becomes um, a surprise. 
And they want life to feel like a new life for you. They want you to feel like you can live a new life now. They show me how hard it would be for you to try to die, to do this all by yourself would have been not possible. You would have died from the suffering inside of you because you were already wanting to, like you were living in between worlds. Um, uh, that was very extreme, okay? Very unusual, very extreme. And... They're kind of showing me that they're creating this like energy barrier where that everything we've seen that you would be trying to press it through your emotions is like so broken down that they're just moving that out of the way. We're going to start with fresh. And when we start with fresh, you need to be extremely gentle on yourself because this hasn't developed a strength yet because now that you're new, you're like baby form and you need to be very, very slow and gentle. And, and we're talking slow for the next five years, okay? Good five years to develop some basic, basic skills again by simplifying, no more calculating, living free in the moment. All that is long, 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 far, far, it was long ago, okay? I mean, even what Metatron just hauled off with a bunch of angels, all that is so long ago. It, w it happened like 18,000 years ago. <sighs> and we're talking like human years. Because 18,000 human years is a long time for us. 100 years feels like a long time. Now imagine living for 18,000 years <laughs> as a human being. Be very tired. It was a very long ago. It was a very long time ago. When Metatron Hall died energy away, it was a really long time ago. It's 18,000 years ago. And it doesn't exist in your present day. It has nothing to do with you today. It's gone. That's it. That was incredible. That was really unique. That was amazing. Like I feel speechless and emotionally changed, you know? Thank you so much for that. I feel very blessed to have gotten to have this experience today and and thank you again for sharing. Everybody watching, um, thank you so much for your love and support here for my clients and my YouTube channel. And um, I hope you all have a very wonderful rest of your day.